Hello guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video for the Ethereum technical analysis. What I have here is the chart for Ethereum versus Bitcoin, one day candles from Poloniex. Okay, so I just woke up this morning and I saw this crazy price movement here and I was like, wow. Uh, I guess the first question would be, is it uh, safe to go back to Ethereum and buy more Ethereum? If you ask me, my very personal opinion, of course, this is not gonna work for everyone, but I would never buy Ethereum at $200 or at $100 when it was $10 at the beginning of the year and the technology behind uh, the project hasn't changed. If anything, it went worse in my view because uh, I bought Ethereum uh, back here for $50. I paid 0 0.52 Bitcoin and it was back then, uh, four months ago, it was like $50 per Ethereum. I sold half of them up here, not at the very top, but in this first consolidation. And then I wanted to sell the other half when it started to crash more, but I couldn't sell it because we had this problem with that crazy ICO that was collapsing the whole network. So all the online wallets for Ethereum in the exchanges were offline. So I couldn't find any way to sell the rest of my Ethereum. And that uh, honestly pissed, pissed me off a little bit The Ethereum they claim to be, you know, the future for for hosting all these millions of applications. It's supposed to be used by by the masses, and it can even handle a few ICOs. As soon as the as the wallet came back online, I sold everything. Uh, I I use Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin for everyday transactions because I do uh, stuff online and I sell products and services and I use, uh, I use the cryptocurrency. And I remember in those days when I wanted to sell the Ethereum, the people that was actually paying with Ethereum, uh, the transactions were not going through. So I had to take the, the Ethereum wallet offline as well on my payment gateway on my websites. The reason I'm explaining this is because, uh, I mean, come on, it was $10 at the end, at the beginning of the year, and after not that long, it hasn't improved in terms of technology. And now it's worth $200. It went up to $400. Uh, to me, there's no logic behind that. And honestly, I don't think the smart money and the smart investors are paying these prices for Ethereum now. I think the smart money came into Ethereum very long ago, probably at $10, $5, maybe $50 you know, these big corporations and all that that we know today, I don't think these people would be paying $200 per Ethereum. I mean, okay, let's put it this way. You hire an employee for your business and this employee has no previous experience at all in the industry, which was the case of Ethereum. Uh, at the beginning of the year, it didn't have any experience. It was not used as platform at all yet. It was just a new project that just, uh, it, hasn't, it, it hasn't been released that long ago and it, ha and it didn't have any use cases yet in the beginning of the year. So if we compare this to an, uh, with an employee and you decide to pay them $10 an hour because they have no experience. And then after six months, this employee doesn't prove himself you know, like, like it happened with Ethereum, when it started to be used to host all these platforms and ICOs, what happened is that the network collapsed and it had to go offline. So the employee, it's not able to keep up with the job and you're gonna raise his payment and you're gonna pay him $400 an hour? I don't see the logic behind this and I would never pay $200 per Ethereum. I would never pay $100 per Ethereum at this, at this stage because of what I explained now. Now, if we look at the technicals, there's a probability that it's gonna shoot up again. It could make another quick movement up. What I see here is this 20 days moving average, the 20 day moving average, which is the, the blue 
line. It's acting as a support and at the same time is acting as a resistance. Right now, the price <clears throat> is right touching this moving average. And at the same time, this Fibonacci level here, it's acting as a resistance. So the price, it's like under so much pressure here between these two, between the moving average and, uh, and the Fibonacci level here. It's going to have to break either up or down. Okay, and it also has this, uh, the middle of the channel line, the dashed line that we can see here. Uh, it's been actually holding, holding very well. It was acting as a resistance all these days, and now it jumped above it, and it's acting as a support. So it's using it. The price is not going under this, uh, this middle of the channel line here. So it could possibly uh, shoot up again, but I still don't think this is going to last. I still, in, the, in general, I think we are downtrending, okay? Even though we are still inside this uptrend channel, I think in the short, medium term, we are downtrending. And I think, I think, and of course I could be wrong, but I think uh, when we are getting closer to the weekend, the general market cap, it's gonna go down again. We're gonna ha we're gonna see all the red again. I was doing my crypto market cap analysis yesterday, and I saw this. I'm just gonna point it out very quick here. So uh, three months. Okay. So I was talking about this crash here. This um, this last very big crash that we had here, and how now it was gonna recover. I was commenting yesterday in my analysis that it's that it will probably shoot up here until it it makes a double top with this last high here. We have a peak here. It's at 89 billion and big crash. And I think it's going to go up to make a double top with this uh, 89 billion. And then after that, uh, I think it's going to be downtrending, of course, with crazy volatility. But uh, I think after we touch here 89, bi 89 billion, which is already touching here, I don't think this is going to be able to break up and it's going to shoot back down. Like, I don't know if it's going to be on the weekend or it's maybe it's going to be just now by the time I finish this video. I don't know, but I've been comparing these patterns with the top of the bubble in 2013-14 and and uh, it's been uh, repeating the same pattern so far for all this uh, period of time. And what happened back then, it was that it was that it touched here, making a double top with this one. So first it went down, this, this crash here, the big one, it made a double bottom with this one, right? It's like a um, strong uh, support line from here to here, these two big lows, okay? And then shoots back up and makes a double top with this last peak here. And after this, it should uh, go back down. And I think when it, start, when it starts to go down here, we're gonna see a lot of red in a lot of coins. And I think that's when we are gonna see Ethereum going back down. Okay, going back to the, um, to, to the technical analysis, the price uh, broke through all the resistance this descending resistance, this uh, Fibonacci resistance, the 20-day moving average, the 50-day moving average, it broke through everything, but then it fell back down very quick as well, which to me, it represents a lot of irrational behavior, you know, from buyers and sellers, because nothing has changed fundamentally on Ethereum. There's no logic reason for um, to have a pump and a dump like this all of a sudden, okay? So I'm not saying it's completely impossible that the price should zap now, it could happen. I don't think at all that we're gonna go up to all them highs and break it, I, like, I don't think. The only way I would change my mind and, and, and say, okay, this is not the end of the bubble, we are gonna, we're gonna still go up and break all them highs, if, if, it would be if the price actually stays above the moving averages for some time. Like in the past, every time the price is above the moving averages, like here, it means it's consolidating or it's growing. Okay, every time the price is above the moving averages, it's because it's trending up. 
but so long as the price cannot make it above the moving averages and it stays below them, it means uh, uh, the, in, the indicator is that the price is uh, on a downtrend. Both moving averages are trending down. The 50-day moving averages is still flat, but it seems it's going to be trending down. Another indicator is the RSI. It's, Ethereum is uh, right now overbought, uh, and it's been overbought for first time since the last one month and a half here. So when the when the lines cross in the RSI, uh, it's gonna it's gonna shoot down. How quick or when exactly I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me that after this pressure here, it shoots up one more time. It wouldn't surprise me that it shoots up, but um, I strongly think this is not going to last. And after it hits some some resistance, it's not gonna last above the moving averages. That's what I mean. It's gonna it's gonna go right back down. What I'm going to do here? Oh, sorry. These arrows actually in my last video were here. I just moved them before I started recording, <clears throat> and I forgot to put them back here. Okay, so this is how I left the chart in my last video, and I actually meant to to move these arrows over here because I'm I'm still I'm still think I still think it's going. The price has to go down all the way down to where before the this crazy up movement started. I mean, uh, Ethereum, in my mind, it's not worth more than 10 or $50. Uh, there's no reason for it. And I don't think the smart money is buying it at $200. So I would not buy it, but maybe this, um, for day traders, maybe they want to, you know, use these, these big bounces to buy it, but to me, it's very, very difficult and very risky. For me, the risk reward ratio is not worth it because it might as well sh bounce back down again, or it, it will go up again. We don't, we really don't know with these cryptos when they start these crazy movements, <clears throat> irrational movements based on on emotions and not on on logic, on the technology behind the project. Then how, if anyone tells you, yeah, it's gonna shoot up or it's gonna shoot down, that's really, there's no no way to know. But the general idea and the general trend in the short and medium term, to me, it's clear that it's still downtrending. I'm going to make another uh, descending resistance line here to where the, the price uh, touched top. So that would be something like this. And again, if the price makes it to stay above the moving averages and it breaks this, uh, this descending resistance again, you know, for some time, not just shoot up and co go back down again. If it does that, if it's able to break these, uh, these resistance and stay above the moving averages, then I will leave these two arrows alone and I will start uh, taking the analysis from there. But until this doesn't happen, I'm going to continue moving these arrows over. Okay, of course, if it breaks and it goes to all-time highs and breaks all-time highs, I'm not going to still be moving these arrows over. I, although I know in the future, even if it's in the very future, the price has to, will have to come down here. But for now, for the short, medium term, let's see what happens during and after the weekend. I really want to see what happens during the weekend. I think that's all I wanted to say about Ethereum. Yeah, okay, guys, I don't know if, uh, if you have any questions or you want to have different opinions or anything. Just comment below because I would like to know what you guys think about this. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.